coverage you can count on. Sometimes in sports you play for the past as well as the present. For nearly 100 years, Maryland has played collegiate basketball and never reached the Final Four. Not even the great teams of John Lucas and Len Elmore. So this Maryland team of Lonnie Baxter, Juan Dixon, and Coach Williams play not just for themselves, but for all those Maryland greats who never accomplished their dream. The great Hank Lucetti helped establish a proud basketball tradition at Stanford that culminated with a national title in 42. But for 59 seasons, Stanford has chased an elusive second title. Now this Stanford team, led by the mighty Casey, stands on the precipice of another Final Four appearance. They played not just for a chance to make history, but to honor their glorious past with a national title of their own. advancing by defeating Cincinnati, Maryland advancing by defeating their crosstown rival, Georgetown. Afternoon, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Stanford and Maryland, a classic matchup this afternoon. And when you look at the numbers, Dan, these two teams are very similar in makeup. Gus, they sure are, but you got to look beyond the numbers. Of course, thinking about numbers, Mark Twain once said, there are lies, damned lies, and statistics. And while these numbers certainly appear that these two teams are similar, they go at it in different ways. They do not play the same style. And this is a game that really is going to be an interesting contrast of styles. So Gary Williams, his team ready for this one. Well, it's, it's two contrasting styles. In other words, we, we like to get up and down. We like to run. And um, we've had some success against good teams by running this year. So. Hopefully, we can play our game tomorrow, and that's not easy to do against Stanford sometimes, but it'll be an interesting matchup between what's primarily a half-court team and a team that likes to go full court. And what is that Maryland full-court style? Well, they really like to get it out on the break and run, and Steve Blake, he can be dangerous, in fact, to both teams in that running style, but they've got guys who can finish on the end of the break, and Stanford, well, coaches talk about the inside-outside game. And Stanford in the half-court set does a nice job getting it inside. Now, as the double team comes, it's great if you can have a guy who can see across the court and can get turned. The inside is cut off. So in this case, Jason Collins pitches it out to Casey Jacobson, who reverses it to Ryan Mendez. Excellent movement in the half-court. All right, so a sellout crowd in attendance, close to 20,000, ready to watch Stanford and Maryland play for a trip to Minneapolis. 90 minute, 90 minute look at the life of one of basketball's most dazzling talents as Harry Connick Jr. narrates Pistol Pete, the life and times of Pete Maravich. Among those featured in the documentary are Mike Ditka, Julius Irving, Lefty Drizel, and a rare interview with Pete's wife, Jackie Maravich. The Anaheim Pond, and Maryland ready to take on Stanford. Let's join the third member of our team, Dwayne Ballin. Gus, you know there is a sense among both of these teams that they have something to prove for Stanford. Though the Cardinals have been number one seed in this tournament, there is a sense in the college basketball community that, frankly, they are not that good. Casey Jacobs we talked to me about that yesterday, and I talked to him a moment ago, and he said, it's showtime. We have something to prove. As for Maryland, the Terrapins have never gotten to this point since 1975, and they feel there are people that don't think they can get beyond. So, with all due respect to Aretha, both teams looking for R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Gus. All right, Dwayne, very well said. So coming up, the starters and the opening tip, Stanford and Maryland, next. Of the NCAA Basketball Championship, is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Microsoft, Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, 
and by Fidelity Investments. Welcome back to Anaheim, Maryland, ready to take on Stanford for the third time. And the Turks lead the all-time series two games to none. The last game, 1998, with the Turks winning it 62-60 at the MCI Center in Washington. Gary Williams looking for his first Final Four. He's a former Maryland player back in 1968. And a look at the starters. Mouton, the transfer from Tulane, along with Terrence Morris. Baxter in the backcourt, Steve Blake and Juan Dixon. Mike Montgomery, the head coach of the Cardinal, looking for his second trip to the Final Four in his 15th season, replaced Dr. Tom Davis. And the starters for the Cardinal, it's Collins along with Mendez, the sharpshooter, and Jason Collins in the middle, the seven-footer, along with Casey Jacobson, the All-America, and Michael McDonald is the point guard. And the officials, John Clockerty, Gary Sitton, and Art McDonald. So er early on in this game, what should we pay attention to? Have to pay attention to how well Maryland defends the inside-outside game of Stanford, and you have to pay attention to how well Stanford is able to prevent Maryland from getting out on the break. The road to the Elite Eight for the Turks. 76-66 winners over Georgetown. And for Stanford, they beat UNC Greensboro, St. Joe's, and Cincinnati, a game in which they shot 62% from the field. That's a little different for Maryland. They're playing somebody that doesn't get involved with George. <laughs> Here's the toss and the tap, and it's controlled. Let's see, by the Terps. Terps will get it. And I know in College Park right about now, they are fired up with R.J. Bentley's out there on Route 1. And the man defense by Stanford. Here's the matchup. Juan Dixon against Casey Jacobson. That ought to be a fascinating one all day long. Morris, one of 11, his last game. Hits his first shot, and that's a huge bucket. Not only is that a huge bucket, guys, that's his first three-point basket of this tournament. So Maryland takes the early lead. Mendez guarded by Dixon. Here's Jared Collins looking inside. Jacobson squares and a hip kick. That's a great job. Juan Dixon went down inside the double team, but Collins got the ball out quickly to Casey Jacobson. Back to the other way. The jump hook is short. And the mighty Casey with the rebound. Good by Jason Collins to keep Baxter just a step further away than he wanted to go. Mendez sets short, rebounded by Morris. Now Blake. Morris again tees it up. And the rebound goes to Collins. You notice that they left Morris at the top of the key to double team against Baxter. It looks like Morris is going to have that shot pretty much throughout the afternoon. Jared Collins drops that fades on the baseline, tapped around, claimed by Blake. Turks want to run it. Blake almost traveled. He'll get it back and set up the offense. Maryland comes in this game 24 and 10. They finish 10 and 6 in the ACC. Mouton drives and fire. And Jacobson hauls it down. Jacobson doing a great job on the inside thus far. Stanford really is going to have to get after it to rebound at the Maryland team. And a whistle. Reach-in foul called against the Terps. Gus Terrence Morris made that first three-point basket of the game, and he really has dropped off, but not only in the NCAA tournament, but toward the regular season, toward the end of the regular season as well. What a stark contrast between the tournament and the season. But Morris, since the end of January, only 7 of 35 from beyond the three-point arc. Inside, Collins, great catch, goes to the basket, can't get it to stay down. Moves on with a rebound. Burks break out quickly. Blake, bounce pass, hit, out of bounds. Jacobson gets a hand on it, and it deflects off Juan Dixon. And Dixon's saying it never deflected off of his hand. Blake is a guy, Gus, who likes to try to make that pass, and sometimes it's just too tough a pass to make. You don't need to make the great play, you need to make the easy one. Now Jason Collins across the lane, and a foul. 
This will be against Terrence Morris. Picks up his first. Gus, what an interesting strategy we have here so far. Notice Juan Dixon does not step down in and try to get the ball. Collins with the one dribble, Morris fouls, and Maryland really wants to attack Collins when he dribbles it, and they didn't do it. And Jason Collins has a lot of Brad Doherty in his game, doesn't he? He really does. He catches the ball very well. He holds the ball up high. He is an excellent passer. And for a seven-foot guy, he puts the ball on the court very effectively. There he is, guarded by Morris. Michael McDonald from downtown, short, and a rebound to Mouton, his second. Stanford doing a great job getting back on defense. Now Baxter across the lane, leads, and hits. They had to get by both of the Collins twins that time. Again, Jaron Collins, number 31 in white, who's matched up against Terrence Morris. Number 44 in red. Watch as Jaron Collins drops away from Terrence Morris to try to go help out against Baxter. Up top, Mendez, and he is a gunner, folks. You can't give him open looks because he'll knock him down. This game tied at five, and a whistle, a holding foul inside against Jaron Collins. Lonnie Baxter, the guy on the inside from Maryland, sets the screen, and then they really look for Baxter once he sets the screen. Mendez reaches down inside. Jaron Collins reaches down inside, but Baxter is able to convert anyway. Lonnie coming off a 26-point, 14-rebound effort against Georgetown. Now Morris with the step on the baseline, leans in. A little too strong. Here comes the Cardinals. Collins dropping to the bucket, counted at one. And that is the second foul on Terrence Morris. We talked about Maryland's ability to get out and run, but Jaron Collins runs the court very effectively, and as a good big guy should do, runs right to the block, catches the ball, powers it to the basket, and Terrence Morris is going to have to leave the game. Replaced by Kaj Hold and a sophomore from Red Bank, New Jersey. But when you look at these two twins, they are so sound fundamentally. They shoot free throws well, medium range jump shots well, they rebound, they don't jump on pump fakes, they do everything very well. They play in a very intelligent game of basketball. They don't beat themselves. Now, Taj Holton, who's come in the game for Terrence Morris, they really ought to nickname him Mighty Mouse because he really did save the day on Thursday when he came in and had 10 points. Baxter forcing his way inside the jump hook, and he gets the bounce. Gus, and that's a situation where Jason Collins is seven feet tall, but you are correct. He's not really a shot blocker, and Lonnie Baxter uses that 260-pound frame to get himself close and get it up over the top. Inside, here's Collins, puts it on the floor, taken away by Baxter in a region foul against Jason Collins. And you rarely see him do that, try to gather himself with the power dribble. And his parents in the stands, Paul and Portia, and they have raised not only two great basketball players, but two very good young men. Well, and now, one of the things is each of the Collins twins has picked up a foul so far. Remember that Stanford, they've got those two twins, but they get bought very small, very quickly if one of them has to go out of the game. Baxter going at Collins again. The jump hook is short. Jason with the rebound. Here's McDonald. Diagonal pass to Jacobson. Picked up quickly by Mouton. And that's an interesting matchup. Mouton, really good size. Back door, Jason Collins. Jason Collins, 15 points, 8 rebounds against Cincinnati. He was 4 of 7 from the floor. And a whistle up top. Taj Holden picks up the foul. To Jason Collins, great hands inside. Stanford up by three. Only two losses for the Cardinal this season to UCLA on February 1st and Arizona on March 8th. Gus, and interestingly enough, both of those losses were at home. Stanford won the games on the road, and don't forget, on December the 21st, Stanford came back from way down in the second half and beat Duke 84 to 83. They were down 15 at one point in the second half, came back to win the game. Cardinal up by three. Theo Johnson in the game. Jacobson leans in, rattles out. Baxter with a strong rebound. His first. And the early three-point shooting. 
Paxton, Blake, Holden, Dixon, and Mujan on the floor for the Terrapins. And now Teo Johnson's gonna try to match up inside against Lonnie Baxter, and that will be very interesting to see if he can keep Baxter away from the goal. Dixon around the screen, the kick to Holden. Got it. And that is a three. Taj Holden, a big guy, just like Jason Collins, who can go behind that arc and hit the three with some consistency. At 10 points against Georgetown. Holden at 6 feet 10, probably a better matchup against Jason Collins than Terrence Morris. Holden, much bigger fella. Jacobs in around the corner, beats Collins. He draws contact inside. Let's flash back, folks. Stanford's Casey Jacobson scored the game-winning basket against number one Duke earlier this season as Mike Montgomery and the Cardinal knocked off Coach Gay's Blue Devils 84-83. The Cardinal trailed by as many as 15 in the second half before coming back. And Coach Mike Montgomery, you know, he has a uh, chip on his shoulder. You know why? Because he feels that the West Coast teams don't get enough attention, and he's probably right. Of course, the West Coast teams, they play too late at night for people on the East Coast. <laughs> Old people can't stay up that late. All those New York riders, as Baxter picks up his first, but what a fine coach, Mike Montgomery. Yeah, he does an excellent job, and that tip on his shoulder, Gus, uh, we don't mean that in any sort of a negative way. Mike Montgomery, a real competitor. Of course, coaches do anything they can to motivate their teams. Former rugby player, Collins with four points, now Dixon for 20. It's pure. Juan Dixon ties the game up at 12, his first basket of the game. And if you saw any of our interviews with Casey Jacobson before the game, he talked about how it was very important that he prevent Juan Dixon from blowing up. And Dixon's certainly a guy who can blow up for a lot of points if you don't guard him. Now get an interactive tournament experience with fan polls, in-game features, and player matchups. It's all at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Game tied at 12. 13.50 to go here in the first half of play. Now Collins, cross court. McDonald loses it into the hands of Dixon. where Baxter really wants the ball on the inside. And he's telling Blake he was open and Blake didn't get him the ball. Now Blake, the high pick and roll, 14 to shoot. Hold it inside, Dixon. Finds Baxter straight to the basket and a reach in foul. And that's against Jason Collins, his second. Very, very difficult to defend Lonnie Baxter. In this particular case, Baxter's out by the free throw line. I think he surprised Collins. Baxter not noted for his ability to put it on the deck and go to the basket, but that is a big foul against Jason Collins. Collins takes his seat. Danny Miller into the game from deep. This is Blake. It's a three. And Maryland takes a 15-12 lead. Just Maryland has only made, only made six three-pointers in the whole tournament coming in. And a steal. Dixon straight to the top and a finger roll. Juan Dixon, one of the best basketball thieves in college basketball. Guess he's in the top 15 nationally in steals per game. You better be careful when he's out on the court. 7-0 run for the Terps. Al Jacobson looking to take over, driving. And Travis. Maryland, if they can get the steals, they can get easy baskets, get the game the up-tempo way they want. Juan Dixon just coming out of nowhere. You have to be aware that he's going to go after the ball, and you've got to step to it so he can't get in front of you. Dixon had 13 points and three steals against Georgetown already with two this afternoon. Now Drew Nicholas in the game running the point. For the church, inside, Martison, travel. 
Mike Martis, this young man who came off the bench the other day with five points. Maryland plays ten guys, and Martis, is a fella at seven feet tall, who can get good position inside and continue to attack the Collins twins in there. On a 7-0 run in the last 215, the bench very important for Maryland. They've got 20 points from their bench 24 times this year. Mendez on the hop, the jump hook is short. Martis is with the board. Now Dixon. Inside, holds it, nice catch. Knocked out of bounds by Jacobson. 11.48 to go, first half of play. Maryland on top of Stafford Flint with its largest lead up by five. And Jason Collins on the bench with two fouls, and that might be the Achilles heel, but not really the Achilles heel, maybe the right foot, the navicular bone, in fact, in the right foot of Curtis Borchardt. This is a young man, a very, very talented player. He's only played 37 career games at Stanford, but he's already number seven on their blocked shot list. Seven feet tall, out for the season with that broken foot. And Martis just turns it over. Dale Johnson picks it up, out of bounds. And the last duck by the Turks. Third turnover of the game for Maryland. For Stanford, their last four possessions, three turnovers, no points. Let's see if they look to get Casey Jacobson on track. Jacobson with three points so far. Jacobson playing against taller guys. Miller at six feet eight defending him. Mouton at six six defending him earlier. And the quarterback knocks one down. Dale Johnson, a freshman from Mira Mesa in San Diego. 17-15, Maryland. And now Johnson trying to match up against Holden on the inside. A turnover, Jacobson, into the front door, to the bucket. And we are tied at 17. Justin just showed you that graphic about Stanford turnovers. Now Maryland with the turnover bug and the Cardinal right back in the game. Hold, hold it on the baseline. Backing his man down, the double clutch. Weak side rebound to Mendez. Cardinal want to run it. And the man for Maryland. Jacobson popping out. And McDonald will reset it. Now Dixon matched up against Jacobson. Cross court, Mendez. Lost it, got it back, but traveled. We've seen Maryland be effective at creating turnovers and then turning them into baskets on the other end. McDonald does a nice job. This is a very aggressive pass. And Casey Jacobson noted for his three-point shooting, but that's a little bit of stuff around the basket. He can finish in transition. Casey Jacobson, a first-team AP All-America, the first in the history of the school. Baxter, he has been on fire during the tournament. Now, he's done a great job getting himself positioned down on the inside. Cleo Johnson, 6'7", 245, just not big enough to prevent Lonnie Baxter from doing whatever Baxter wants to do down there. Baxter, they say, he's blue collar. McDonald, Andrew. And Stanford takes the 2019 lead. Very interesting. Stanford hasn't really handled the Maryland inside game well, but Maryland hasn't handled the Stanford perimeter game very well. Miller on the wheel. Beautiful layup. Nicely done by Danny Miller. You get worried about Baxter, and so you don't go and give the kind of defensive help that you normally would provide to your team. Danny Miller, ironically, was recruited by Stanford, but chose to stay on the East Coast. Now Jared Collins, weak side, McDonald, down the lane, the runner. Five points for Michael McDonald. 22-21, Cardinal. Well, Baxter asking for it inside again. Holds it, can't hold on. Stanford is a team noted as being catch-and-shoot guys, but Michael McDonald, one of the guys who does a real nice job getting it to the basket. And again, Maryland a little afraid to come and help because they don't want to leave Jaron Collins alone on the inside. So minute by minute, Michael McDonald starting to lead this Stanford basketball team. Now Collins inside, beautiful shot. 
24-21 Stanton. And the other way, here comes McDonald. Now Jacobson drives, fires, and air ball. Terrence Morris back into the game, his second. Blake. And a whistle and foul. Now Sunday on 60 Minutes, a quarter of a billion dollars over 10 years. Alex Rodriguez has the biggest contract in the history of sports. Is he worth it? Find out Sunday on 60 Minutes. Maryland, the first three rounds, 6 of 29 from downtown today, 3 of 5. Baxter to the bucket, reverse layup, got it. Baxter with eight points in the first half. At some point in this tournament, teams are going to get the idea that they really are to guard that guy. Very difficult. As I mentioned, they call Baxter a blue-collar worker. His father works for DC Metro. Lonnie Baxter Sr., over 20 years with the basket barn. No, Baxter cleaning it up inside. Cross court, Nicholas. Now Blake dumps it down and turns it over. Michael McDonald the other way. Midday. And a whistle. Bob coming up against the Turks. Gus, it's very interesting. Stanford has really done a nice job when they've been able to get in their half-court offense. 7.38 to go in the first half of play. Stanford and Maryland duking it out. Back in Anaheim, Stanford leads Maryland 24-23. Back in February, Maryland was floundering. In fact, the Terrapins had lost four of five, and Gary Williams was searching for answers. So what he did, he got Baltimore Ravens head coach Brian Billick to speak to his team prior to a game on the 20th of February with NC State. It worked because then they went on to win nine out of eight. I wonder what he said to them. He was supposed to be here today, guys, but believe it or not, he got caught in traffic on the freeways here in Southern California. Winning nine out of ten games, Coach Billick and the Super Bowl champion, Ravens. A big help to Gary Williams. Justin, very interesting. That man right there, Gary Williams, Brian Billick is only the second person that Gary Williams has ever had speak to his team before a game. The other one was, was when he was at Ohio State. And the guy that spoke to his team was an Ohio State graduate, a fellow by the name of Jack Nicholas. Inside, Mouton off the heel. Jacobson with the rebound, his third. Stanford trying to advance to the Final Four for the third time in the school's history. 1942, they were the champs, and they advanced in 98. Mendez down the lane, rejected by Baxter. And Maryland thus far doing a nice job making Mendez put the ball on the deck and go to the basket. You don't want to let Mendez catch it and shoot it. Now Baxter on the low post, runs right over a Cardinal, gets his own rebound, and a whistle inside. With the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed over $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. And the second foul has been called on Mouton. Stanford really doing a nice job on the boards. Maryland having a difficult time getting second shots. And when they get them, Maryland falling away. Mike Montgomery's troops did a nice job contesting after Maryland gets an offensive rebound. Maryland over the limit, one and one for Mendez. And he is one of the best free throw shooters in the country has in only, any league. <laughs> has only missed five all season long. So he's now 93 of 98. So he's close to that Rod Foster of UCLA, that big, or that Pac-10 record of 95 out of 100 in a year. Did 49 in a row at one time. The school record was 41 by Todd Lipke. And he misses the second. Inside, Dixon throws it out of bounds. Dixon a little out of control. Gus, I tell you what, Juan Dixon threw the ball 
to a spot where Terrence Morris should have been. Terrence Morris made the mistake a lot of guys do. Dixon penetrates to the basket, and Morris stood and watched. What you've got to do is you've got to follow that ball to an open spot, and Morris didn't do it. Brings in Tony Joe Bikini, a junior from Salt Lake City, and the Cardinals turn it over. Here's Miller in transition down the lane, going away. Maryland is simply not executing in its transition game. Stanford's executing well in the half court, but Maryland making some mistakes in transition. And both teams making mistakes right now. Nine turnovers and eight turnovers. Here's Morris from 20. It's good. Terrence Morris, it's a two-point field goal. Put on the line. He has six. Make it five. And don't forget, coming up next, Duke versus Southern California in the East. Obviously, if you're Maryland, you'd like to have that three-point basket, but his foot was on the line. But for Maryland, that's a positive sign that he's shooting it from out there. How big of a game is this for Gary Williams and the Terps? They have never been to the Final Four. This is his first Final Eight appearance. And so many great players coming through that college park gymnasium door inside Collins. Short, loose ball, Jacobson fights for it, and he'll jump it up. The possession arrow in the favor of the Cardinal. And you think about all the players at Maryland, Len Bias and Len Elmore and... John Lucas. John and Lucas, Walt Williams. None of them ever advancing to the big stage. Jacobson off the dribble. The kick, Julius Barnes rises. It's short. Morris with the rebound. His third. Blake inside. Baxter lowers his shoulder, and he will run over you. Baxter just does a great job, Gus, running to the block. And that time, Steve Blake showed some good patience, not making the tough pass. Waited till Baxter got in great position and put the ball right on the money. 27-25, Terrapin. McDonald rejected by Morris. McDonald gets it back and a region foul against the dirt. Just because you're a big guy doesn't mean you walk down the court. Now, this is a good play not to throw the lob to Baxter, to wait till he gets right in position. Collins doing the flop. And I'll tell you what, if you're going to drop inside against Baxter, he's going to score every time. Lonnie Baxter from Silver Spring, Maryland, went to Springbrook High School. He said that he patterns his game after Charles Barkley. No nonsense on the floor. And McDonald misses the first. Michael McDonald, the senior from Long Beach. His father, Glenn, was an All-America at Long Beach in a first-round pick in professional ball. McDonald gets the second. 27-26. And there's the Stanford. Baxter once again, guarded by Collins. Drops it up and takes it home. The young man is going to work then. Gus, if he's going to dribble the basketball, that time Julius Barnes tried to get down there and get it, but you've got to be there and take the ball from him when he dribbles it. He gets that one power dribble, and unless you steal it, it's going in the goal. Baxter with 12. Dale Johnson squares. Way off the mark. Knocked out of bounds. Last up by the Cardinal. And the Maryland fans are into this one here in Anaheim. So Blake, Morris, Baxter, Miller, and Dixon on the court for the Terps. And a look at the shooting. Maryland turning it up. Keep in mind that Jason Collins on the bench for Stanford with those two personal fouls. Blake, count. Thus, they've now got four three-point baskets to the Terrapins, and they only had a six total in the first three games of this tournament. 32 to 26. Maryland. Largest lead of the game. Barnes in the corner, trying to answer loose ball, and Maryland is after every loose ball to start. It's Morris. It's Dixon inside Morris. Maryland has to 
game going at a tempo they really like. Dirk's on a 7-0 run. Inside, knocked off with the knee of Collins. A great hustle by Collins trying to get out after that. Now McDonald, the runner. Loose ball and a foul coming up on Blake. Jaron Collins snatching down the offensive rebound. We talked about Maryland wanting to play the up-tempo style, and Juan Dixon makes a great decision, faking out one defender, drawing the other one, and finding Terrence Morris very effectively on the inside. Sub comes into the game. Blake picked up his second. Mendez back on the floor. Blake takes the seat. And that may be as big for Maryland as Jason Collins being on the bench with two fouls is for Stanford. Blake, a really key to running that team. Jared Collins gets the first one to go against Cincinnati. Stanford, 20 of 29 from the line. They're a 74% free throw shooting team on the season. And the big guys shoot it extremely well. Second one good. Collins, four for four. And a look at the game summary. Maryland shooting 60%, 15 of 25. However, Stanford only down 34 to 28. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Tell me what you think so far. Gus, I think for the most part, Maryland has got the tempo of this game just about where they want it. A lot of turnovers by Stanford. They only average 13 a game on the season, and they've already got eight. Now Baxter. A blocking foul on the baseline against Teo Johnson, and they don't have any answers for Lonnie Baxter right now. They have to force Lonnie Baxter to give up that basketball before he gets in a position to make a move to the basket. Got to bring somebody down from the top to try to dig it out of there, make him pass the ball outside. Into the backcourt, Morris. Morris has seven points after going one of 11. Gets Georgetown, having four points. The post! Get Morris into Baxter's it, got 12, score. Morris has seven, so they've got 19 points from the big guy. Morris on the bank, short, Mendez clears the rebound. I think every time Maryland sets up in the half-court offense, he got Lonnie Baxter out of touch the ball. The last 12 possessions, four turnovers, no points for the Cardinals. So now Stanford, the pace a little bit slower. Knocked away, out of bounds. We'll head the other way. Stanford having a hard time getting in their offense right now. And a look at the tournament summary. All four number one seeds are still alive. And the Pac-10, three teams in the Elite Eight. How about that? Henry Bibby, what a fine job he's done at SC. And that ought to be a great team. Duke against USC. Nicholas pulling up. And Dale Johnson with the rebound. His first. McDonald the other way. Collins. Mendez. Johnson. Counter. Johnson doing a nice job. He's now got five points off the bench. They went right inside on the attack. Four point Maryland lead. And in for Stanford. And again, we're in the half-court set. Lonnie Baxter really ought to be touching the ball. Not out there, though. Now Dixon on the fade. An air ball. That's good defense by Jacobson. And a steal. Dixon, lead pass. Nicholas, he's got a trailer with him. Up in. The feline quickness of Juan Dixon stepping into the passing lane, forcing the turnover and now potentially a three-point play. Gus, you better zip that ball from one station to another if you're playing offense against Maryland. This is just a very soft pass to Mendez. You can't lob it in there. And Maryland, once they get the ball, they're interested in getting out and going. Teo Johnson and Mike Montgomery thought that was a walk, but the official disagreed. And Drew Nicholas as the free throw, the sophomore from Long Island. Full court pressure by the dirt. Collins trying to get it in bounds. Jacobson almost steps on the sideline. Knocked away into the hands of Dixon. Down low, Nicholas. 
As the Terps catching the Cardinal off guard. Maryland makes them pay every time they turn it over. Maryland doing an absolutely fantastic job thus far, turning that defense right into easy offense. Terps with their largest lead up by nine. And a push inside against Baxter. Now don't forget, coming up at the half, the singular at the half, Rick Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in the studio with tournament news. And they will take a closer look at Arizona's Lute Olsen. Mike Montgomery on the sideline as Jason Collins heads to the free throw line. And Jason Collins, of course, with those two personal fouls. Mike Montgomery, no choice, really, but to put Collins back in the game to give Jaron Collins a little rest. Now, Jaron Collins can get up and re-enter as well. But with 56.2 to go, you want to get him out of the game if you can. And Collins misses the first. And to allow Mike Montgomery to get him out of the game as Martisich comes in for Baxter, Jason Collins is going to have to make this second free throw. And he missed them both. And now he's got to be careful. Jason Collins, that is. Don't want to pick up your third foul with less than a minute remaining in the half. Let's see if Maryland goes right at him. Dixon down the lane. Blocked by Collins, loose ball, scramble, picked up by Jacobson in a push. Chris Wilcox pushing Casey Jacobson. <laughs> you tell me these guys aren't interested in going to the Final Four. This ball, everybody down on it, and Wilcox just stumbles into Jacobson, and whether it's intentional or not, it's contact and it's a foul. So they will make the walk to the other end of the floor. And Jacobson will shoot two. Stanford in the double bonus. And that's a real break for Stanford. Maryland had the opportunity to maybe get two possessions before the end of the half and stretch out that lead. Tonight on CBS, Greg T. Nelson stars as a police chief who's on a mission to stop crime in Washington, D.C. See why the district is Saturday's number one show tonight on CBS. Both free throws good. And Jason Collins takes his seat. 37 seconds to go. 39-32 Maryland. This really looks like it's open here, doesn't it? The Maryland guys are in this area here, but watch how quickly Maryland closes to the ball. The deflection by Wilcox. Maryland gets the ball, and then they are able to attack the basket. They've really done a nice job converting the turnovers. And Stanford, the Cardinal, have turned it over 11 times, resulting in 14 Maryland points off turnovers. And that is a huge number here in the first half of play. Stanford... Not a team that turned the ball over an awful lot. Well, they only averaged 13 turnovers per game on the season. Now Maryland trying to spread it out. About two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Look for Dixon to get it. Weak side, Holden squares up. And hits. Taj Holden, two threes in the first half. McDonald from midcourt. It's short, and Maryland, they can't play any better, folks. The Terps head into the locker room with their largest lead, 42 to 32. What a nice job by Drew Nicholas. Now, this isn't really that good a pass, but Taj Holden catches it ready to shoot, and boy, that's what you have to do. And here's Dwayne Ballin with Gary Williams. Coach Williams, a very aggressive first half. Are you pleased with the first 20? Well, I really liked our effort. I thought we battled when we had to with the big people, and we did a pretty good job defending on the three-point line, and that's hard to do because they can score both ways, but I, I was really impressed with our composure that half, and hopefully we can do that the next 20 minutes. What adjustments would you like to make in the second half? Well, we got to get to the foul line. We only shot one free throw, so we got to be more aggressive going to the basket. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. One half standing in the way of the Terps and the Final Four. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this. 
NBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Salomon Smith Barney. Nextel, Holiday Inn, and by United Airlines. And welcome back to the pod here in Anaheim. Maryland leads Stanford 42-32. Moments ago, Dwayne Ballin talked to Mike Montgomery. Coach Montgomery, what did you say to them at the half? Nothing. We're down. We didn't play very well. We didn't execute our offense. They took us out of our offense, and that's happened a little bit to us lately. we got to run offense. We cannot allow their defense to take us out of our offense. If we don't run cuts, if we don't catch balls, get in the offensive area, we can't win. They're playing good. They're shooting the ball in, and uh, we got to do a better job defensively, but we have to execute on offense. Thank you. Good luck in the second half. Maryland shooting 56% in the first half of play, 18 of 32. So we start the second half. Turks with the basketball. Blake along with Mouton, Baxter, Morris, and Dixon on the floor for the Turks in red. Just Maryland has gotten easier shots, and the proper guys are shooting the ball for Maryland, whereas Stanford, their shots have been a little more difficult, and their top options are not getting their, the most shots. Jacobson only has four shots at half. Baxter down the lane, pushes off to the basket. Mouton with the rebound, gets it up short. Casey Jacobson into the front court. Justin, he's got to find some shots. Michael McDonald has six shots. Jacobson only has four. Jacobson must get some opportunities. Now Collins on the pump and gets it to fall. Jared Collins with nine points. Monty Baxter and Terrence Morris both picked up two fouls in the first half, so it's a good idea by Stanford to go inside early. Blake to the basket, kicks it out, Dixon. 18 to shoot, Blake on the crossover, blocked by Jared Gollum. Boy, that was good defense by Stanford. Mendez all alone, great pass by McDonald. And Gary Williams is going to waste no time settling down his team. Calls a timeout. 18.39 to go. Second half of play. Stanford answering to start the second half. Smagilant helping make it all possible. <laughs> We've taken the fiction out of science fiction. Agilent Technologies. Dreams made real. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics. Gus, and this is the big stat right there. Maryland, 14 points off turnovers. You heard Mike Montgomery at halftime talk about how Stanford was not running the offense, and the result has been Maryland able to get out and get some easy ones. Ball deflected by McDonald into the hands of Mendez. Now McDonald, weak side. Jacobson from the parking lot. The mighty Casey knocks it down, and Stanford now down 42 to 39. And just a great job defensively by Stanford. They're getting their hands on a lot of balls that Maryland's trying to throw. So a 10-point deficit. Rejected Jared Collins, and he's got something to say to Baxter. You're picking on my brother. Gus and Lonnie Baxter, that hasn't happened to him very many times. Has that shot blocked in there. Great ball movement by Stanford. Maryland really having a difficult time reacting. And you better react to Casey Jacobson. The three-point shooting. Stanford, four of nine. And a whistle. Morris, Morris steps, steps on, the on the sideline. Gary Williams really wondering what the heck is going on. His Terrapins, the Terrapins played so very well in the first half. Stanford on a 7-0 run to start the second half play. Down by 10 at halftime. Derek Collins to the basket. Rebounded by Baxter. Inside Baxter, great catch. Got it, and the foul. Gus, and that was a fascinating 
set by Maryland. It's not really a half-court set. Lonnie Baxter is down there in the middle of white shirts. That's an excellent pass. Mendez comes over. There's no way Mendez is going to stop Baxter. But Stanford had four guys back, and they weren't able to react to Lonnie Baxter. And Baxter adds the free throw. Well, what an important three-point play for Maryland. 15 points for Lonnie Baxter here is the full court pressure. Jacobson, double T, gets it out to McDonald. Mendez, quick release. Out of bounds. And right now, Maryland, they're forcing Stanford to play quicker than they want to play. Absolutely. Now, Jacobson does a nice job being tough in this double team. He holds on to the ball, gets the ball out, but McDonald sort of lost it. Trying to dribble. Well, a little too fast. Morris. Jacobson has done a nice job defensively against Dixon. Dixon pulls and trades it. That is Man. Casey Jacobson esque shot right there, just way beyond the line. And the lead 48 to 39. Dixon with seven. Maryland three-point shooting. They were one of nine against Georgetown. Different story today. Now Jacobson rises again. And Baxter with the rebound. is six. Blake from 20 feet. They are stroking it. The Maryland Terrapins lead the cargo from Stanford 51 to 39. And that's the way, if you're Maryland, you want to react to that 7-0 run that Stanford hits you with to start the half. Jacobson posted up now, inside, short. Then he was fouled on the wrist and a whistle and foul inside. Maryland doing a great job moving the ball. And you get the ball inside a couple of times, and they start to back off again. <laughs> it's a long, long three-point basket by Juan Dixon. Third foul on Baxter. So Maryland answering with the 9-0 run of their of their own. Yes, and that third foul on Baxter with 16-07 remaining in the half. That's like the uh, thunder clouds you can see coming on the horizon. Collins inside. Offensive foul. Baxter sliding in. And that is a <laughs> that's a gutsy Dangerous play by play. Baxter. He's got three personal fouls, and he's trying to step in here and draw the charge. That is a tough call. Now Gary Williams, Baxter scared him so much, he's getting him out of the game. So both Collins boys with two fouls, and Baxter takes the seat. But for Gary Williams, Lonnie Baxter playing so well, it's a nice sunny day. But over in the west, you can see those clouds, those clouds building up. coming in. So you want to protect Lonnie Baxter. So, so you get him out of the rain. Absolutely. <laughs> but you get him out before the rain starts. Baxter gets four here early. Could be Hale for Maryland. 51-39 inside Holden. And he's called for an offensive charge and foul. His second. The bracket in the West. Stanford and Maryland. Stanford trying to advance to their third final four. Maryland, it's first. Back after this. Mike Montgomery's team down 51 to 39. He picked up his third straight Pac-10 title this year. Seventh straight trip to the NCAAs. And Stanford still, in a certain way, fighting for respect nationally. There's no question. And they simply, as you heard Mike Montgomery say, right before the start of the second half, Stanford's not executed very effectively in their half-court offense. They did early, but the Maryland defense has really taken Stanford out of what the Cardinal wants to do. Now Jacobson. Driving hard to the basket, blocked by Holden, out of bounds. And last touch by the Terps. And Jacobson really having a tough time. Mouton at about 6'7", and then Miller at about 6'8". They've run at Casey Jacobson and forced him to put the ball on the deck and go to the basket. Jacobson, 3 of 8 from the field, 10 points. Now Collins posted up across the lane, a recent foul on Morris, his third. And Juan Dixon telling Terrence Morris, just keep your hands up in the air. 
Collins taking it aggressively. Dixon misses the, the steal, and there Morris just plants his arm right across the arms of Collins. And now both Baxter and Morris with three personal fouls, a key situation for Merrill. Jason Collins, the sophomore, two of four from the line, gets the first. Baxter on the bench with three fouls. Mike Martisic checks back in. Terrence Morris takes a seat. So here's an opportunity for the Cardinal to make a significant run. No nope. Morris and Baxter on the bench. No question, Gus, and there's been so much talk in this tournament about the Maryland bench. Well, the Maryland bench is going to have to produce for the Terrapins right now. Maryland's bench is counting for 20 points on 24 different occasions this season. 10-point lead. Almost turned over. Dixon grabs it to Blake. Blake, the kick, holds it. He can hit from there and does. That's his third three-point basket of the game. Taj Holden, the sophomore from Red Bank, New Jersey, averages four points a game on the season. He has nine right now. Up, up, help! Jason Collins forcing his way across the lane, and a whistle and foul. Mike Martisic picks up that foul, but Blake penetrates into the lane, and that leaves Holden open on the outside. Unless you play against Maryland a lot, you may not understand that Holden is a guy who'd much rather go out there than inside. And there's the bench production. Ball tipped it. At the end of warm-ups before this game, the last player to leave the floor was Taj Holden. He was shooting three-pointers on this end of the floor about two feet behind the rubbed-out line that you see. <laughs> Inside, Jacobson forcing his way up. No. And a whistle, another foul coming up. This time on Jaron Collins. His third foul. Gus Jacobson is really having a difficult time against the Maryland defense. Jacobson plays that two-guard spot, and many times this year he's played against smaller guys, but against Maryland, he's playing against guys his own size or bigger, and they're really bothering his outside shot. Jacobson, three of nine. Dixon around. Juan Dixon, the young man from Baltimore, Maryland, and the Turks with a 56-41 lead, largest of the game. In the corner, Mendez. Knocked away by Holden. Loose ball, picked up. And a whistle, Mendez fouling Blake. That's not a bad foul because Maryland had an easy basket. Mike Montgomery, that expression on his face really sums it up. This is a team that spent a good portion of the season at number one. They're 30 and two. He has not seen his team play this poorly at all this season. But people have doubted the Cardinals this year, especially the Riders on the East Coast. And they play the Pac-10. They don't play the Dukes and the Marylands and the North Carolinas. Here's a great opportunity for the Stanford team. Martisic inside, holds it, turns. And Jason Collins with the rebound into the front court. Mendez saves it and a foul. But you can't count Stanford out. Remember 1998, the last time the Cardinal won a regional final? Mark Madsen's improbable basket after a Tyson Wheeler turnover gave Stanford a 79-77 victory. Stanford advanced to the Final Four where they lost an 86-85 overtime thriller to Kentucky. Mouton picks up his third foul. Now Johnson spinning short, rebounded by Miller and the whistle. This one coming up against the Cardinal. And it looks like Jason Collins picks up his third. Gus, this is a Stanford team that shoots the ball very, very well. A lot of firepower on Mike Montgomery's Cardinal squad, so it's much too early to count them out because they can score a lot of points in a hurry. Stanford 13 of 36. Inside, Dixon can't hold on. Gets it to Holden again. Rims out Jacobson. 
swooping in for the rebound is six. Samson down, now going with a quick lineup. Johnson deals it. Collins finishes. Now Stanford has gone smaller to match the Maryland quickness. Barnes in the game at the same time as McDonald. Casey Jacobson moves to a forward spot. And Teo Johnson in the game as well. So the small, quick lineup for Stanford. Miller on the power dribble. Travis. And that quickness for Stanford creates an opportunity for Johnson to deal inside, draws the defense, and Jason Collins doing a great job following the ball. The Stanford big guys really do that very well. well here's the shooting you talked about, Dan. They can't get back into the game. But Maryland not giving up a lot of open looks right now. Jason Collins, baseline fadeaway, rattles out, rebounded by Baxter. And Miller into the front court to Baxter. LB. It stands for pounds and power. Lonnie Baxter. <laughs> Guys, keep in mind when you're thinking about a Stanford comeback, Maryland has been very effective playing the up-tempo game. Nicholas picks up the foul right there. But for Maryland to continue to be effective, they're going to want to run up and down, and that means a lot of possessions for Stanford. Baxter with 17 now. And Baxter, again, he just gets into the area. Three guys go at Miller, and you better not leave Baxter to go to Miller. And Lonnie Baxter, such nice hands on the inside, and he really does have the power to get it up over bigger guys. Lonnie Baxter has really worked on his game at Maryland. He's lost weight. His touch is much better. And he still has one more year remaining. Now keep in mind, he's in the game with three personal fouls. Trying to guard Collins inside. McDonald. It's a three. There's that firepower we talked about. Stanford just has to execute its half-court offense to get those kinds of openings. There's the three-point shooting. Maryland, 8 of 11. The Cardinals, 5 of 12. High pick and roll for Blake. McDonald's right on his hip. Now Baxter. Drop step. Yes, you know, when you're shooting 8 of 11 from beyond the three-point arc and you've got a guy operating inside like Lonnie Baxter's been operating today, Mike Montgomery has to wonder just how the heck do we defend these guys. 60 to 46, Baxter with 19 points and a whistle. And Collins gets up slowly. Danny Miller trying to get out of Casey Jacobson runs right through the screen. Right now, Lonnie Baxter, the young man cannot do anything wrong as he knocks it down from inside, 19 points to go along with six rebounds. And Jason Collins will shoot. 17 fouls against Maryland with 11.27 to go here in the second half of play. And Collins gets the first, he's five of seven. Of course, Stanford trying to take advantage of every opportunity. There's, there's the team foul situation. Maryland over the limit. And the second good for Collins. 11.27 to go. Second half of play, 60-48 turn. We have company. And a look at the game summary. Maryland on top of Stanford, 55-38. Gus Johnson along with Dan Bonner. Dan, if there's a team in the country that can come back, it's the Stanford team. Gus, there's no question. They trailed Duke by 15 points in the second half in a December game. But Mike Montgomery's team held Duke to one field goal in the last eight minutes of the game. And the Cardinals scored on their last 14 possessions to come from all the way down and win that one. Stanford shoots 51% from the field as a team, 42% from the three-point line. And they go to a zone. But they have to stop this man. Baxter, straight to the basket, 21 now for Lonnie. 62-48, Terrapin. That's on Thursday against Cincinnati. Stanford went to the zone late in the game and was very effective, but you're right, they've got to stop Baxter. Bayo Johnson knocks it down, 13. We have a 12-point game with 10.44 to go. The winner to advance to the final four in Minneapolis. Maryland has never been. Now 
Blake with the step. Offensive foul. Running over Collins. Gus, in the zone defense, you've got to communicate with one another. Here's Lonnie Baxter here, and watch, he's just going to slide into this open area in the zone, and nobody really pays any attention to him. Mendez does not see him behind, it, or excuse me, Johnson, until it's much too late. Baxter just comes across, claps his hands, and it has been magic for Lonnie Baxter today. Baxter, 10 of 16 from the field. 21 and 6. His fifth double-double in the last seven games is what he's looking for. Man-to-man -man for Maryland. Julius Barnes lets it fly. It's short. And the rebound goes to Nicholas. That's one of the things that Stanford really needs to do against this Maryland defense is drive the ball into the lane. Force the Terrapins to make some adjustments defensively. Inside, back to can hold on. Slip and fell down. Barnes chases it down. The kick, McDonald rips it. Here they come. Michael McDonald with 12. He had six at halftime. And right now, the Stanford crowd in attendance is starting to buzz. Back to the man to man. Kicks it, pushes off. And oh, what a grass! Holy mackerel! Dixon with 12. And that, as you said, Dan, a huge basket. 65-53, and he comes up with the steal. And will head the other way. Maryland struggling to find point, and Juan Dixon just nails it. Maryland bench and the Maryland crowd really likes that one. But even more importantly, Jaron Collins has picked up his fourth. Gus, we mentioned Stanford just not very big on the bench. So Jaron sits down, replaced by, by his brother Jason. And Jason playing with three. 9 8 to play in regulation. Defense for Stanford. Baxter. Turn. Rims out. Dale Johnson with the rebound. That's about the first bad batter that Lonnie Baxter has had today. Remember, Baxter has three fouls as well. Now Jason Collins. Dale Johnson. Flat. Rebounded by Dixon. I think Morris got a piece of that. That's a tough, tough play for Johnson to try to make Morris. Six feet nine, long arms. It's tough to just back him in and shoot over it. Johnson listed at six seven. He's about six five and a half. Now Dixon. Mendez catch and shoot. And hit. Boy, Juan Dixon is really upset with Danny Miller. He was telling Miller all the way down the court to get over and guard Mendez. Miller didn't do it, and Dixon's telling him as they go to the bench. Now, in transition, you want to find Ryan Mendez. And look, Juan Dixon is pointing over this way, and Danny Miller's pointing over this way, so they know where he is. And watch Dixon. He continues to point. Miller doesn't get out and cover him, and that leaves Mendez wide open for the three. And Mendez against Cincinnati, 16 points, 14 of those in the second half of play. He has eight points right now, five coming in the second half. That's just part of that firepower we talked about. You simply cannot lose track of Ryan Mendez. Young man from Burleson, Texas, averaged 38 points per game in high school. Teo Johnson picks up a foul, hanging on to Terrence Morris. Now, Thursday on CBS, how do you solve a murder mystery when rain washes away the evidence at the crime scene? It's the toughest challenge yet for the investigators of CSI. Don't miss an all-new episode Thursday after Survivor on CBS. Stanford over the limit, their 17th foul, one and one for Morris. 
Terrence Morris, an 80% free throw shooter. And he misses the front end. Now McDonald pulls. Loose ball, Morris going up high and claiming it. Boy, what a big rebound. His fourth. Morris. Chasing that man to man. Here's Blake, hard around the corner. The runner, no good. Loose ball, Morris rebound. Jump put down. The penetration draws the defense. You gotta go try to block that shot because Blake was wide open. And Terrence Morris following the ball. 67-56. Turf, McDonald all the way in. Loose, tap, and play by Morris. Now Blake. And Dixon pulls it out. Boy, that was a good decision by Warren Dixon. Now Blake again. Dixon. Baxter. Get counted. <laughs> Lonnie Baxter, 23 points, 6.14 to go. Maryland up 69-56. And Jacobson has been quiet here in the second half. Mendez rises and rips. And Mendez starting to heat up as well. He has 11. Justin Lonnie Baxter walking up the court right now. He's been very active. He's looking for a timeout, I think. The big fella earning his scholarship today. Baxter again runs right over Collins and picks up his fourth foul. Fourth foul on Lonnie Baxter. Maryland up 69-59. This interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. Lonnie Baxter on the bench with four fouls. And he has really come to play today. 23.6 rebounds. But on the other sideline, Casey Jacobson has struggled. Three of nine, only 10 points. Remember, he's coming off a career-high 27 versus... Cincinnati in the semifinal, and it's been a frustrating affair for him thus far. One for five in the second half. Don't forget the other piece of the puzzle comes up after this. Duke versus Southern California. The ACC versus the Pac-10 once again. This is a key possession for Stanford. They've got Baxter on the bench. If they can score here, Maryland's really missing their inside offense. This changes the whole tempo of the game, I think. Jason Collins across the lane. Rims out Morris with the rebound. Morris really stepped it up. He's now has seven rebounds. Let's see the way Maryland approaches this. They've done very well playing up-tempo. Now they're going to spread it out a little bit. Side Holden, and he's fouled by Collins. That should be his fourth. And it is. And Maryland will shoot one and one. Maryland doing a nice job making aggressive cuts in their half-court offense. Terrapin's actually got a break right there because Morris threw that ball behind Taj Holden. That foul had not been called. Gary Williams' squad would have turned it over, and Gary Williams showing you with his facial expression that he's aware of it. Taj Holden gets the first to go. Ten points for Taj. He has three threes on the afternoon. And look at the team free throw shooting. Maryland only four attempts. Stanford 17. Second one in and out. Moore with the rebound and follow. Where did everybody go? 72 to 59. Here's Collins in the high post, back door, Jacobson jams it down. I haven't lost him very many times, but you know if you're going to lose him, Gus, it's much better to lose Jacobson and give him a two rather than a three. 
Blake has been good with the basketball today, but Miller almost turns it over. Poked out of bounds, last shot by McDonald. Now you'd figure that the guys on the free throw line, since there's four white shirts and only two blue, but Davis actually blocks out Casey Jacobs and falls down and allows Morris to get to the ball. That's really, you know things aren't going well for you when that happens. Gary Williams, four minutes and 30 seconds away from the final four. With this lead, it's not enough of a lead against Stanford for anybody from Maryland to be comfortable. Blake. Eight to shoot. Dixon down the lane on the run. Juan Dixon with 14 now. And Maryland takes a 74-61 lead. And Juan Dixon has made some big, big shots. He has 10 in the second half. Mendez sets his feet and hits. And Juan Dixon just hangs his head in the corner. Dixon went flying at Mendez, but again, Stanford crawls back to within 10. A lot of time to go. And a reach-in foul called against Michael McDonald. His second. Without Lonnie Baxter in the game and with the shot clock running down, Juan Dixon, a guy who knows he has to make a play, and that is an unbelievably difficult shot. Hits it fading away. Baxter on the bench with those four fouls. CBS Sports Live stat of the game. Three-point shooting in the first three rounds. Maryland, six of 29 today. Nine of 13. Blake gets the first one for complete tournament coverage. Go to cbs.sportsline.com. Gus, that's one of those stats where if you're Mike Montgomery, you have to wonder if you're cursed or something. Blake. 11.7 assists, four turnovers, 3.42 to go. And the lineup tonight on CBS. 12 years ago, Gary Williams took over a Maryland program that was in shambles on NCAA probation, still fighting the death of their greatest player, Len Bias. He promised one thing, to restore the team the national prominence. Gary Williams is three minutes and 42 seconds away from doing that. And the final four. But Stanford will not make it easy. Here comes McDonald. Jacobs down the lane, a region follow up Blake. He got him on the wrist. Gary Williams has done, Gus, an outstanding job with this particular team. Remember, we told you early in the season how they started the year so poorly, losing three of the first four. This is a team that everybody had ranked in the top four or five teams in the country. But Gary Williams put the pieces of this team back together. Jacobson, three of three from the line. Now has 13 points as Blake takes a seat with his fourth. Gus, keep in mind that this is a Maryland team that led Duke by 10 points at home with 50 seconds left in the game, and Duke came back and won the game. So Maryland, I don't think they feel that any lead is ever comfortable. And Second one, one, good. And there, now they, they throw it away, trying to be a little too aggressive. 76-66, and Stanford, ditto. And Gary, Gary Williams telling his team, hey, come on, you got to think about this. That was not a good play to make. Oh, and there's putting up your Dukes. Right, and that, that Duke loss, you can see, was very devastating to Maryland. And they finally got it turned around in this late season stretch. Now Nicholas brings it up the floor. He's playing some big minutes right now with 3.10 to go. And Blake on the bench with his fourth. Only a sophomore. Dixon quickly to the basket. Juan Dixon taking over in the second half. 16 points at four at halftime. That's what you have to do if you're Maryland. You need to continue to make plays. Now, in this end, the Terrapins do not want to foul. If Stanford is going to score, make them do it from the field. Don't allow them to do it while the clock stops. Ball tipped. And Morris reaching in, picking up his fourth. Tomorrow, top mogul skiers and aerialists compete at 
Papa John's Bumps and Jumps Championship. Then Olympic medalist Tommy Moe and Kyle Rasmussen head up the competition when the teams from five countries ski off at the four downhill series. Dale Johnson missing the first. Yes, and one of the problems, we talked about that Maryland game, one of the problems that Maryland had, or that Duke game, one of the problems that Maryland had in the last couple of minutes of that game, they committed a lot of silly fouls, and now Gary Williams has Morris out of the game. Second one good for J.O. Johnson. The only fouls if you're Maryland that you want to commit in this situation, if you want to commit any at all, are those guys going to the basket and shooting. You don't want to commit those reach fouls. Set it up, man. Set it up. Dixon. Okay, two. Two. Gets it back to his point guard, Nicholas, and a reach and foul on McDonald. What you're doing at this point in the game, you're Stanford, you're down by 11 points. You want to be aggressive, and remember, Let's go back to that Duke game again, and Gary Williams and the Maryland fans certainly don't, don't like to go back to that game, but Drew Nicholas missed three, three free throws in that game that allowed Duke back in. So Maryland is 69% free throw shooting team. Nicholas, 68% on the year. And that, see, if you're Stanford, if you commit the foul like that, it's not a bad foul because now you can trade. Even if he makes them both, you can trade those two points for three if you can get a three-point basket. But now you can still cut into the lead by one even if you just get a two, and that's provided he makes this one. And he does. 2.29 to go. 79-67, Terps. 2.20. Two minutes, rather, away from going to the final four. Now Mendez spinning, stripped, and a region foul on Dixon. Gus, and that's exactly the kind of foul you can't commit. Do not reach after that ball. What you want Mendez to do is put the ball on the deck, so Dixon has accomplished that. That's just a swipe at the ball. Do not foul that. Let him go up and shoot. You've got big guys, Martisic and Holden, in there to block the shot or get the rebound. You do not want to commit that kind of a foul, particularly not to put Mendez on the line. Mendez misses his second free throw of the game. He came into the tournament 90 of 95. Gus, that is a huge break for Maryland that Mendez, he's now one for three in this game. You figure if he's on the line, you just wow. chop him up. It's automatic. Don't even make him shoot him. Second one good. And a timeout call by Stanford. 2.17 to play in regulation. 79-68 Maryland. 2.17 to play in the second half. Maryland leading Stanford 79-68. So many great players coming out of this Maryland program. None of them advancing to the final four. Len Bias, Walt Williams, Tom McMillan, John Lucas, Lenny Elmore, Keith Booth. And the Terps are 2-17 away from getting there. Justin, I'll tell you, there's some pretty good coaches that never made it either. A guy named Bud Milliken and a guy named Lefty Drizel. And a double foul. No, intentional foul. Intentional foul, rather. Called against the Cardinal. And you want to foul in this situation, but you really have to be careful. And Mendez gets called because he wraps his arms around Taj Holden and knocks him out of bounds. Now, of course, the rule on the intentional foul is you get two shots and the ball. I don't know about that one, Dan. But Gus, the reason they call it is he wraps his arms. And when you go to a referee school, that's what they tell you. If your guy wraps his arms, it's an intentional foul. As Holden misses the first. misses the second they also say Dan that the line does not lie <laughs> well here Mendez just wraps his arm and Mendez continues Gus and pulls him down but that actually turns out to not be a bad foul because they don't really lose anything except Maryland keeps the ball Dixon guarded by Jacobson approaching the two minute mark of the second half Maryland two minutes away from Minneapolis 
run the clock down and try to score at the end of the shot clock. And a reach-in foul, Johnson. Now that should be an intentional foul. Teo Johnson with that football player's mentality. He's a quarterback. They're not supposed to have that kind of mentality, are they? This is a play are a lot tougher nowadays. Where he just runs after him, and he does not wrap his arms around him. He doesn't pull him down. Gary Williams, of course, agrees with you. He thinks that one ought to be an intentional foul. Johnson's brother is a linebacker for the Cardinal. Taj Holden will get another try at it. One of four from the line this afternoon. And this kid has played big in the last two games. Ten points against the Hoyas. And he has ten points right now. And he's struggling with the line. Don't forget, coming up next, will it be Duke or USC? Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein will have the call for you. And Holden sneaks the pair. 81-68. Stanford's got to hurry now. Clock working against him. Mendez sets and delivers. Ryan Mendez has kept a minute. This afternoon, 81-71. Now this is Ryan Mendez right here, and Juan, uh, Juan Dixon is going to go for the steal and get on this side, which will give Mendez the opportunity for the open three-point. Look, you don't need to steal. You need to stay in front of Mendez and make him shoot the two. Full-court pressure by the Cardinal. Holden to inbound, Blake, he's fouled by McDonald. Steve Blake will go to the line, McDonald picking up his fourth. The problem for Mike Montgomery at this point in time is all your guys basically have four fouls. He's at the point where he's going to start running out of players. So even if by committing fouls and have Maryland miss free throws, that he can keep his team in the game. Very few guys eventually are going to be able to play and score. Steve Blake at the line. Gets the first. His father is afraid to fly after having an emergency landing years ago. So he drives to every Maryland game he can get to about 1,150 miles. He could not come out to California to see his son. But in a minute and 41 seconds, he can start driving to Minneapolis. 83 to 71. It's Dad Richard. Blake takes his seat. If your best offensive players have to foul to keep you in the game, when they foul out, you don't have any firepower to get back in it, and that's what Stanford's facing now. Mendez dumps it down. Collins lays it up. Wise decision by Holden. Holden trying to get it in bounds. Calls a timeout with 126 to play. 83-73, Terrapin. This is the final between Stanford and Maryland. 126 to go in the second half of play. Morris on the bench, Mouton on the bench. Terps trying to inbound. Blake, Baxter, Holden, Dixon, Miller. And Lonnie Baxter is not a good free throw shooter. Dixon is, however. Leaves his feet to Baxter. You gotta follow him right now. And they get him with 121 to play. Lonnie Baxter, a 58% free throw shooter. Here's Dwayne Ballin. You know, Lonnie Baxter, Gus, did not come to basketball naturally. He's had to work on it. He was not recruited heavily out of high school. Matter of fact, I talked to his strength coach, Curtis Schultz, a short while ago. He told me that Lonnie originally hated lifting weights. And he had weight that was, well, let's say he was a little excessive in the weight area. So they had to redistribute his weight, convince Lonnie to start lifting weights. And now he hits the Stairmaster 20 minutes a day after lifting weight. And he loves it. Body fat goes down from 18% to 11%. All right, Dwayne Baxter, though, more importantly, hitting the front end. A 
58% free throw shooter on the season. Two for two this afternoon. 121 to play. Second one way short. Well, Kelly barely grazed the rim. 84 to 73. Maryland. McDonald looking. Collins for three. And Holden comes up with the rebound. Here's Holden into the front court, fouled by Casey Jacobson. And the Maryland Terrapins are 106 away. Stanford has accomplished so much this season. That's and you can understand why they're discouraged, but again, we'll remind you that Maryland Duke game in College Park this year. Maryland was up 10 with 50 seconds left in the game, and Duke came back and won it. Substituting going on right now. Now the referees are not going to allow the substitutions to occur because Holden already had the basketball. Lonnie Baxter has to come back into the game. Gary Williams trying to calm his guys down on the floor. Coach Williams. Good on the second. Now a sub. Baxter takes the seat. Morris back in. 14 points for Holden. Ties a season high. Now McDonald takes the three off the back rim. Good. Morris with the rebound. Morris really coming up big on the backboard. Eight rebounds now. Diagonal pass Miller. You want to keep the ball moving so they can't find you to foul you. Nicholas. DeMorris, Turks play keep away. Maryland, 41 seconds away from Minneapolis as Dixon draws the foul on McDonald. And McDonald falls out of the game with 12 points. And this young man, courageous effort this afternoon. He is one of the leaders on this team. Ron Dixon missing the first. 16 points for Dixon. 7 of 10 from the field. Second one pure. 87 73. Joe Bikini into the front court. Mendez has to force it up. Loose ball tapped around. Morris with a rebound. And Morris finds Nicholas. 26 seconds to go. The Maryland Terrapins, after 100 years of basketball, will head to the final four for the first time. to their first Final Four. So the first piece of the puzzle is complete. The Terps have a ticket to Minneapolis.
The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Lonnie Baxter, 24 points on 11 of 18 shooting. Ryan Mendez, 18 points, 4 threes. Coach Gary Williams, triumphant. Terps are in the big one. For Dan Bonner, Dwayne Ballon, this is Gus Johnson. Now let's go to Greg Gumbel right after this. One team into the final four, and it's the Terps of Maryland. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. The Maryland Terrapins knock off the number one seed Stanford. And coming up next here on CBS, we will have the East Regional Final. That'll take place in Philadelphia. The Duke Blue Devils against the University of Southern California. But on the heels of the Maryland victory, let's take you back out to the pond in Anaheim and rejoin Gus Johnson. Gus. Gary Williams, you took over this program 12 years ago. You guys were on probation. This must be an awesome feeling. It is a great feeling, but I'm happy for these guys. They stayed with it all year. We took some a lot of adversity this year, but we stayed with it. You know, and that's what it's all about. I think that really helps you as you go along in life is to understand that you can make things happen when they don't look real good. Dan? Gary, now tell me, tell me honestly. When you walked off the court, when you lost the home game against Florida State, did you ever imagine this in your wildest dream? No, you know, your big concern is to win that next game, really. You don't get away from that, but I was hoping we'd get good because, you know, this, <laughs> this is a good feeling for some of those people that have had some comments after that game. So that's the way it works, though. In sports, you usually get a chance. You usually get another chance. Juan Dixon, right now, you came in the second half and really took over this basketball game. Can you give us an idea of what you saw in that second half to allow you to score so many points? You know, I just wanted to stay aggressive. Uh, in the first half, I struggled with my shot. I think I was going too far inside. You know, I just try to stick to my game. Let's pull up ju jump shots, floaters, and I, I got an opportunity to get a couple threes off, and they went in for me. We got Lonnie Baxter. Lonnie, 24 points in the game today, including that shot that I'm sure Coach Williams has you working on all the time, that drive and little duck-in move. Talk about what you were trying to do before the game and what you accomplished. I mean, I just try to play, you know, strong inside, establish myself, you know, on the low block, you know, just really take it to the hard strong. We knew that we were big, and, you know, that's what we had to attack them at. All right, guys, Juan, one final question to you. Your parents passed away tragically years ago. What's going through your mind as you uh, have a chance to celebrate this Final Four appearance? You know, right now, I wish my parents could be here to see how I've grown up and see how I stay, stay strong. You know, a lot of people counted me out. A lot of people didn't believe I could play on this level. I guess I'm proving a lot of people wrong, and I'm going to keep on doing it. And you wanted to do one thing to your coach, didn't you? Right here with his hair? All right. Now let's go back to Greg Gumbel, who's standing by in New York. But first, a commercial timeout. Maryland heading to the Final Four. We remind you, coming up next in Philadelphia, Duke against University of Southern California. Meanwhile, back at the pond in Anaheim, the Maryland Terrapins cut down the nets in celebration of their first ever appearance in the Final Four. For the 13th time in 14 years, the ACC sends at least one team to the Final Four. We'll continue on the road to the Final Four after this message and a word from your local... CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, IBM, Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, and by Miller Lite. Back in New York, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg as the Maryland celebration continues in Anaheim. Clark, you said it at the beginning of the day. Maryland could win this game and Lonnie Baxter would be big. He was large and also the defense of Maryland, their team quickness, and they got tremendous play from their bench. And Stanford did not play one of their better games. Today. Another regional championship still to come. We'll be sending everyone off to Philadelphia. First Union Center, USC and Duke coming your way. Jim Nance and Billy Packer are there. We'll see you at the half. Enjoy, everyone. They have an advantage in quickness there. That's a good matchup for Duke. 